Welcome to another episode of Strategic Minds Making Money Moves, putting those strategies together to get that green. Today, I have a phenomenal guest with me. I have Miss Erica Rascon, who is with Deeply Rooted Wellness and Yoga. And we're going to be discussing today, how do we educate a community on a product that we have that we're trying to extend the scale of? I'm looking forward to that. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to have you. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Would you share with our audience about your organization? Sure. So uh, Deeply Rooted Wellness and Yoga is a holistic wellness center, and we offer private yoga sessions, essential oils and aromatherapy, as well as herbal teas. So all of these products sort of work together to provide a, a holistic health methodology for our clients. Um, we are currently on a mission that's twofold. The first is to address the immediate need of our client, which is, let's say they have difficulty sleeping, we got a product for that. The second part of the mission is to get them into a lifestyle uh, with our products and our services that can address the root cause of their initial concern. Um, and that's kind of the twofold. We want to address the immediate need, but we also want to help them make the lifestyle changes needed so that they can experience the long-term benefits of wellness. Um, we've run into a bit of a challenge though, so I'm hoping this is what you can help me with today. <laughs> <laughs> and that we're able to sort of get them through the door and we're able to get our clients to start off with those one-off products that kind of address the immediate need, but we're not getting them to transition to that next phase, to work with us so that we're able to get down to those root causes and get some lasting results for them. And I think the challenge is rooted just in education um, we're not entirely sure. Maybe that's what we'll figure out today. Um, but it's so important to get them there because if we, we get them to that one-off thing, right, where if you're having trouble sleeping, you get an herbal tea, you go to sleep, that's great. How do we build customer loyalty, customer retention? How do we build that relationship with them beyond that single product? So we, we need to address that. Okay. Sure. So let me ask you a question about your um, um, about your clients. Do they understand when when they come in mm -hmm. when you're talking about that immediate need? Do they understand holistically what the program offers, or is it just introduced to take care of that immediate need? Um, we're getting better at doing both. I think initially it was an issue that they wanted the single product to address mm -hmm. the single need because that's what we promoted the most. Mm -hmm. And you know, that makes sense. That's what we were presenting. Um, we're doing better about creating a broader picture of what we offer. Um, and we're doing that through packaging some items together. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we use sleep as one because that's, that's something that comes up very often. But, you know, we'll offer the herbal tea. We'll offer the essential oil therapy. We introduce yoga and movement and we create packages around that as well mm -hmm. as consultations with nutritionists and things like that. So we're getting better at that, but we, we're still working on the educational component of how do we communicate to our clients everything that we offer. So it sounds to me like one of the challenges is, is how do you communicate the value mm -hmm. of being able to say, this is really what you need. This mm -hmm. is the problem you have. And here's what we have to solve it. Mm -hmm. Not just to get you to sleep tonight or tomorrow, but to actually talk about what can we do to help you long term right. um, so that that can continue on. Now, before I, I move on to um, talking about some different tips, um, when people come in for sleep, do they continue to buy their sleep product from you or do they just come in buy that sleep? Oh, I'm sleeping. Now I don't need to buy it anymore. I'm over it. More of the latter. Um, I, I'm proud that our products are effective, right? That's good. <laughs> but um, it, it's generally like, oh, I got the results that I need, and so I'm done now, the end. You know, and so we, we struggle to sort of get them back into the door and get them back into that conversation and say, okay, I'm glad you're sleeping, but why weren't you sleeping in the first place? You know, and, and that's where we're sort of losing. So that's where I want to talk a little bit about. I'd like to understand, if I were to walk in and, um, you know, something I've struggled with all my life, no secret is weight. And we know weight is something that people struggle with all the time. It's like sleep. But it's like, oh, my God, how do I get my weight under control? Mm -hmm. Right. And you may give me things to help me manage my appetite and manage what I'm eating to to help me when it comes to that weight and that weight gain. Mm -hmm. But the challenge becomes, you know, for me, when you're ta when we're talking holistically, when we're talking about um, what I can actually, you know, gain 
from being able to do that. How do you approach me to say, this is what you do long term? Um, how does, how, what information do you get from me at the time that I'm coming in to say I need weight loss to also give you information for what you need for long term so you can incorporate that in when you're talking to them? Hmm. Uh, there's sort of two challenges to that. The first is that we do a lot of our sales online. So if you go and you purchase the product um, through like our Etsy shop, for example, mm -hmm. there's no communication there. You know, you might get the metabolism boosting tea, but then I don't learn anything else about you. So I, I've started to follow up with clients and, and follow up with people who have purchased the product and try to learn more about them after the purchase has been made. That's probably not the most efficient way to do it. <laughs> and I'm interested in, in learning other ways, but that's kind of what happens. Um, if someone calls in, that's an entirely different uh, process for us because I am able to have like a little miniature consultation with them, learn more about them. We have an intake form. We streamline that process. That's been very helpful. Um, but we, we just need the conversion next. Well, we're going to take a station break and then I have some ideas I'd love to share with you. Awesome. We'll be right back. Strategic Minds, Making Money Moves, with Vicki Wright Hamilton, focuses on helping entrepreneurs to overcome their business challenges to help increase their bottom line. Each episode provides strategies for growth and transformation. Watch Vicki share her 20 plus years of experience as a corporate executive to help entrepreneurs level up. Strategic Minds, Making Money Moves, to get that green. The thing we have to think about is I'd like to give you something to consider. Not only do we have to do it for our businesses, but I contend you do it for yourself. You know why I say that? Because if you think personally, you have a budget at home, only so much money comes in, only so much money can go out. You have Things that you do at home called processes, meaning who's going to wash the dishes, who's taking the trash out, who's cooking the meal, who's doing the laundry. All of those things are how your household actually runs and operates. When it comes to people, not only is it the people within your household, the people that, you're, that you live with each and every day, what happens when people come to visit, what does that look like? So you have that component of people as well. And guess what? You're also an employer. Did you know that? Did you know you are the CEO regardless to what you do to earn your money? Because as that CEO, your customers are the people that you pay. When you go to the grocery store, that's a customer of yours. You're paying money to it. And they expect you to come and they're what? relying on those dollars. When you get your lawn cut, when you get your nails done, when you get your hair done, all of those people are customers because they're relying on you to give them their money. They're relying on you to make that paycheck. When things happen in your household and you go, well, can't afford to go get my nails done this week, you look at it as, I just can't get it done. The person that does your nail looks at it as, I lost, I'm not making money, I, I'm without. So we have to consider not only the strategies of home, but they also translate to the strategies at work. So I contend each and every person can have strategic minds to make money moves. Whether you're trying to make the money in the household personally, or whether you're trying to do it professionally, when whatever capacity you may earn those dollars. So think about always understanding that strategy is practice all the time. We make those moves by conscious decisions and those conscious decisions give us what we need in terms of developing that green at the end of the day letting the dollars come in. So let it rain, let it rain dollars on top of dollars because you're using great strategies for implementation.
Welcome back to this episode of Strategic Minds Making Money Moves. And I have Erica Raskin here with me today. And we're learning all about wellness and yoga and, and how we need to approach our total being mm -hmm. um, in terms of moving forward. So I want to finish up on some of, some of the things that you were saying prior to our break. And what I want to expand on is the fact that you said, well, when I'm online, I don't get any information. Mm -hmm. Why do you not have information that you gather that when they're, before they put in their payment information, maybe it's one or two questions. Maybe it's um, because of the research you've done. You know, these are the kinds of things that are problems when people can't sleep. These are, so what do we generally do on the other side when that was the root case? the root cause and what occurred. How can I gather that data at the time that they're getting on? Two questions max, but they do it right. You know, they're, they're, they're getting their money. They go, oh yeah, I want that tea. And you say, okay, you get that tea. When I need your name and your address, I have two questions I need to ask, mm. right? Ask a couple of questions and then let them finish doing their payment. So you can begin to gather data and information from a vehicle you're already using, okay. you know, in, ter in terms of moving forward. The other thing is, is do you offer any um, wellness education through your organization? What does that look like? Yeah, so when someone makes a purchase or even uh, they show interest in our services or our products, we uh, offer like a newsletter. Mm -hmm. So that's one way that we, you know, we gather their email information. We're able to constantly send them the content that we're creating. Some of our educational content includes a blog that I maintain regularly, but let's be honest, people generally <laughs> don't like to read. So uh, what ends up being even more successful than that, I think, has been video and Instagram. Uh, so our YouTube channel is doing fairly well. It's new, um, but we have about 7,000 subscribers and we've that's gotten... Awesome about 250,000 views. Um, we've been able to monetize it, which is great. <laughs> um, but we use that as a, as a resource so that once I notice that, you know, all the clients that are purchasing a product related to sleep, I use that newsletter and I direct the content about sleep towards them. Um, and so I'm sort of navigating through our different social media and, and things like that to sort of get content to them that's educational. Um, but that's really the extent of what we've done so far. So have you done anything? Um, are you, do you go to any conferences, any associations, anything where you can spread the word about what you do, but helping them to understand the why? Yeah. Starting on the back end. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is start with the big program in mind, not the short term fix. Let's start with what is it that we really want to do big term, uh, you know, long term. We might have major product categories. Mm -hmm. I have one for sleep. That's a major one. I got one for weight. That's a major one. I have one for whatever those top two or three are that you're hearing about. When you begin your education, start on that end that says these are all the things you need to do to fix it, mm -hmm. to get to the root cause. These are all the things you need to do so that it, you're maintaining it. You're able to, you know, continue to move forward as opposed to I'm going to treat the symptom. Right. Right. And I treat this treat the symptom today because I needed something to help me go to sleep because I've been worrying a lot. OK, next week I'm not worrying anymore. I don't need it anymore. So I'm not going <laughs> to use it. Right. right. I, whatever I was worrying about got solved. <laughs> right. And so what happens is, is that it's like, OK. I'm done, you know, I, I finished what I need to do. Mm -hmm. But if you allow me the opportunity where you're actually telling me, look, it's not just about not sleeping. We have found through our research that here are some of the root causes and this is what we need on the other end for you to have a holistic view. Mm -hmm. Then now I can begin to start with that in mind and move forward. Um, and it really helps when you're, if you're, if you're able to get boosts at, at, at events, uh, more importantly, if you get speaking engagements, mm -hmm. you know, going to places, you know, mental, physical, and emotional health is huge right now. Yes. We all are dealing with some form of it from COVID, much less anything else in our lives that have gone on, right? And trying to handle it and deal with it and having to adjust to this new norm. So as we're dealing with that, this is an ideal opportunity for you to begin to think about how do I get more of that, you know, book those times for next year when this pandemic is over, mm -hmm. 
Lord willing, when this pandemic is over, you know, third quarter, fourth quarter next year. But when it is, am I ready and prepared that I've got speaking engagements set up, that I have opportunities set up so that I can get the word out there? Mm -hmm. Am I able to join someone else's newsletter? So this is where I want to talk a little bit about partnering shit, partnering and doing mm -hmm. that. There are so many entrepreneurs out here. And one thing we know for sure is everybody wants content. So if you can partner with someone else who has a component that they touch on with wellness, it might not be the center of their business. It's the center of yours. It's the core of what you do. Maybe you can offer some content on their side and you barter, mm -hmm. right? I can offer you some content over here. Can you help me with this over here? When we don't have money, that's what we do. We barter. When we have opportunities where it's like, look, if I can publish on, on your uh, YouTube or if I can be an ad on your YouTube or if I could do this, if I could do, there's so many different ways because what happens is then it's not just your audience you, you are educating. It's other audiences that you're getting the word to. Yeah. It's other people that you're expanding that knowledge for. So think about ways that you can make that happen and leverage other people. That's excellent. I, right? Yeah. Leverage other people. The third thing is, and this is something that, you know, really works well, especially through this social media time period. And I recommend you get permission first before you do it. But when people allow you to tag them mm -hmm. and when groups allow you to tag them, you hit that monumentally. Those numbers exponentially go up. Because every time you're tagging them, everybody that's part of that gets it. Everybody that's part of this gets it. So now you're getting education even across, right? Um, and across the spectrum as you're moving forward. So uh, I have one more tip that I'd love to give you when we come back. And we're going to see if the audience has any questions or comments that they would like to share. Awesome. We'll be right back. Strategic Minds. Making Money Moves with Vicki Wright Hamilton, focuses on helping entrepreneurs to overcome their business challenges to help increase their bottom line. Each episode provides strategies for growth and transformation. Watch Vicki share her 20 plus years of experience as a corporate executive to help entrepreneurs level up. Strategic minds making money moves to get that green. The thing we have to think about is I'd like to give you something to consider. Not only do we have to do it for our businesses, but I contend you do it for yourself. You know why I say that? Because if you think personally, you have a budget at home, only so much money comes in, only so much money can go out. You have things that you do at home called processes, meaning, Who's going to wash the dishes? Who's taking the trash out? Who's cooking the meal? Who's doing the laundry? All of those things are how your household actually runs and operates. When it comes to people, not only is it the people within your household, the people that, you're, that you live with each and every day, what happens when people come to visit? What does that look like? So you have that component of people as well. And guess what? You're also an employer. Did you know that? Did you know you are the CEO regardless to what you do to earn your money? Because as that CEO, your customers are the people that you pay. When you go to the grocery store, that's a customer of yours. You're paying money to it. And they expect you to come and they're what? relying on those dollars. When you get your lawn cut, when you get your nails done, when you get your hair done, all of those people are customers because they're relying on you to give them their money. They're relying on you to make that paycheck. When things happen in your household and you go, well, can't afford to go get my nails done this week, you look at it as, I just can't get it done. The person that does your nail looks at it as, I lost. I'm not making money. I, I'm without. So we have to consider not only the strategies of home, 
but they also translate to the strategies at work. So I contend each and every person can have strategic minds to make money moves, whether you're trying to make the money in the household personally or whether you're trying to do it professionally, when whatever capacity you may earn those dollars. So think about always understanding that strategy is practice all the time. We make those moves by conscious decisions and those conscious decisions give us what we need in terms of developing that green at the end of the day, letting the dollars come in. So let it rain, let it rain dollars on top of dollars because you're using great strategies for implementation. Welcome to another episode of Strategic Minds Making Money Moves, putting those strategies together to get that green. Glad to have you back. Um, we're here talking to Erica. Um, wanted to um, give another tip to you. Um, and one of the things that I think that you can leverage is a lot of businesses, um, especially as they're getting back into, into the spot, and this is something for you to plan for, in the future is that they like to offer their employees employee benefits. And they will, for those that don't have exercise locations or exercise things, they're trying to figure out what can we offer our employees to help, our, to help them health wise because their health cost goes down. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing? You're solving a business problem. So when you approach them as a corporate entity, if you just offered yoga during lunch, if you just offered a nutrition class, if you offered herbal teas, if you did a taste of herbal teas, if you, there's so many different things that you can do. But from a corporate perspective, if you helping their people stay healthy, you're lowering their cost on that healthcare cost. Mm -hmm. And that's huge for a company. Yes. The other thing is, is we think about schools, universities, um, you know, offering programs, um, getting getting in where you have that audience, that segment of audience where you can go and share. Um, let's not forget about those that are on, you know, that are on campus. And, you know, sometimes they have workout facilities, sometimes they don't. Sometimes the workout facilities are looking for programs, right? right? Wouldn't it be great to go to Georgia State and say, look, I got something I can offer and we can do a yoga class, right? right. And, yeah. and offer yoga and, and offer the herbal tea at the same time, mm -hmm. right? So I just think there's lots of avenues to explore to get that education out there, the partnerships that you can do to get out there, um, the different platforms you can get on to get out there and make it happen. Awesome. So in terms of, of moving forward. So let's see if our audience has any comments or questions they'd like to share. Hi, um, I'm, my name is Tamara and I love what you're doing. And I just have a suggestion. So have your clients give their testimonial. Um, whether it's um, video or in word, because they are going to speak to their problem and how you solved it. Your clients will be your best testimonial because you can always tell them my product does this, this, and this. But when they say that you actually solve whatever issue they had, uh, yeah, so that's good. Let them speak for you. Yes, thank you. Yeah, well, thank you so much for that. Well, we're wrapping up this episode of Strategic Minds Making Money Moves. Will you join me in thanking my guests? So thank you so much, Erica. It was a pleasure having you. We look forward to seeing you next week on Strategic Minds Making Money Moves. See you then. <laughs>